Hello everyone, Adrian and Kenny here. Hello. My handsome future husband. <laughs> I let him know that I was going to be filming an absinthe review today. And he said, oh, well, we, would you like me to join you? <laughs> and I said, absolutely, that would be great. I was a little, you know, I was a little sus at first because I know he doesn't like absinthe, but it was nice that he volunteered. She was very... Um questioning of my good intentions. <laughs> I told her, I do nice things for you all the time. Why is this suspicious? And I said it was because you don't like absinthe. Okay, so the absinthe we are going to be reviewing today is one by the Francois Guy distillery, and it is, you know, the name of the distillery, Francois Guy. And he does a couple of other absinths as well. Um, I can't remember those off the top of my head, unfortunately, but he does do other brands. He was actually featured in the absinthe documentary I showed you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, the, was, that was actually fun to watch. Yeah, he enjoyed it, even though it wasn't something he necessarily, like, was interested in. He still loves documentaries because we're both nerds. Complete nerds. And if you want, you can wear the headphones while you read it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, one of my favorite things is to play with the microphone and listen <laughs> to my own voice. So. He, he does have a good voice. Uh, Francois Guy is more aniseed than average and is produced in the pure traditional way, according to an ancient house recipe. This absinthe will enchant both novices and confirmed absinthe drinkers. <laughs> according to a recipe more than a century old, its color is obtained entirely naturally from plants. Francois Guy is produced from old methods of distillation guaranteeing the character of the traditional taste of absinthe. It is therefore no surprise that it won a grand, uh, it won a prize three times in a row at the absinthe, absinthe aids and absinthe aids in Pontalier. Pontalier. And that's actually the festival that I was invited to um, be a judge at. A particular absinthe which merits being discovered. Francois Guy received a gold medal at the uh, Concours. Con Concours General uh, uh, Agricole uh, Agricole 2016 and 2017 in Paris. He was also awarded a gold medal, medal if I could speak, <laughs> at the Absinthe Aids 2015. Yeah. So, uh, exciting stuff for someone who doesn't really drink absinthe. Very exciting stuff. There we go. I had my fun. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. All right, so this sample was kindly sent to me by my friend Rory, who is responsible for sending me a lot of samples of absinthe that I have tried throughout the past year. We are very grateful to Rory because this allows me to uh, try many different types of absinthe without having to in invest in a full bottle. There are, of course, some absinthe sites out there that will allow you to try like flights of samples, if you will. Um, so now what's going to happen is we are going to reposition the camera. We are going to examine the color and the louche and the aroma and um, You know, we'll give our final thoughts at the end and we're gonna do something a little different today So since Kenny has a lot more of a sweet tooth than I do um, He is going to be drinking his absinthe with sugar and I will be drinking mine without so this will be a really good opportunity for us to contrast and compare how it tastes with sugar versus without. So I thought that would be a really good idea. If you guys like that format, cool. Um, let me know in the comments. We'd love to hear your input. Alrighty, let's do this. All right, everyone, we have repositioned the camera. So now what we are going to do is we are going to film the preparation process. And you may notice this adorable little kitten over here being pet by Kenny. Uh, she decided to come in here while we were preparing for this part and we thought, fuck it, we'll just keep her in here, why not? So like I said, we are going to try it both with and without sugar. This side will have it without and this one will have it with. I know you guys have kind of been, a few of you have kind of been like, oh, you should be doing your absinthe reviews with sugar, and I'm just like, mm. you know, I, I want to be able to get the full flavor. Oh my god, that smells really good. It actually smells pretty decent, yeah. You heard it. Kenny said it. He said it smells decent. He, one who does not like absinthe, said it smells decent. Okay, so color 
actually looks pretty good. I'm, um, I can definitely see it is very natural and it smells really, really, really good. Um, so color, I would say four stars because it's correct. It's not overly green. It doesn't necessarily have like the perfect color. It could be a little bit deeper in my opinion um, to make it slightly prettier, but it definitely has a jewel like brilliance, which is what we aspire to have with absinthe. So now I'm going to grab another absinthe spoon. Someone suggested that I put an absinthe spoon on top of my glass, even if I'm not preparing it with sugar. Just to, to, oh, whoop, you spooked her away. Aw, she'll come back. Yeah. Okay, I had it the right way. Wait. Yeah, I had it the right way. Okay. Okay, so one of my viewers actually suggested that I, um, even if I don't have sugar with my absinthe preparation, that I put a spoon on top to kind of minimize the splashing. So apparently when Precious skittered away, she was reminding us that I needed ice in my fountain. <laughs> I was so distracted by her being here that I forgot about the ice. All right, so let's go ahead and start the preparation process. That certainly doesn't cut down on the splattering very much, but that's okay. Okay, so immediately it's turning milky the second that water hit it. That is amazing. That is what we want. That smells really good. The color is actually really, really nice. I'm really digging it. Definitely correct for absinthe. Looks like the uh, other one's full. It's getting there. So just waiting for Kenny's to finish up here. All right, so as far as um, Lush is concerned, it is a no-brainer four and a half stars. That is really beautiful, really thick, not quite as green as I would like, but still really gorgeous and correct, basically. With the neat appearance, it is four stars, and with the Lush in consideration, it is definitely like four and a half stars. Wonderful. I am very excited to try the taste and the aroma and the aftertaste and we will give our final thoughts. Alrighty, so we have our prepared glasses of Francois Guy and I did forget unfortunately to um, advise of the alcohol content. Um, it is 45% alcohol, like straight. Wow. All right, so go ahead and take a whiff. Ooh. It's not as powerful a smell as when it was just straight, uh, obviously, well, yeah, since course. it's been watered down. But it's still, you know, it's a pleasant smell. It, it almost reminds me of pine trees. Almost. Let me smell yours. Maybe yours is a... Oh, I can get a little more of that from the... So you're sugar, getting more minty this? Yeah. You're getting more mintiness yeah. from this one? Than yeah, that no, one. there's a little more... There's a little more kick to that smell. Yeah, a little more of a bite to it. Definitely a prominent pre presence of wormwood, which is great. That's what we like. You can kind of taste it just breathing in and not even sipping it. Like, no, with your mouth. Mm -hmm. You can kind of taste it. A little bit. Just like that. So I would say the aroma is four stars. It's not necessarily anything remarkable, but it is definitely historically correct. And, you know, I can say that having had pre band absinthe because it's amazing. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go in for a taste. So, santé, and please drink responsibly. That's actually okay. Like, I'm actually good with this. With the sugar. That, yeah, that does not have as much 
of the the black licorice flavor I dislike. Which is weird because it said that um, it had a bigger presence of aniseed in the description. And that's the black licorice flavor that absinthe has. It could be the sugar covering it up. The sugar could be covering it up. Here, let's, let's do a quick little switcheroo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the sugar. The sugar, sugar covered it up. Yeah, no, I prefer <laughs> it with the sugar. Well, yeah, of course. He prefers it with sugar anyway because, you know, he has a sweet tooth. That's why I had Twix right before recording. It's the only candy with the crooky crunch. <laughs> Don't sue me, Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, no, I... Um, I can actively say that you enjoy that one. That this is is probably one of the best absinths I've had. Um, I don't drink as nearly as much, but this is one that like I'm not having to force myself to drink to be polite. Because once like once a glass is poured for me, I feel like I have to drink it whether it feels I like obligated. it if I whether I like it or not because this shit's expensive. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is this is actually okay to drink. I wouldn't necessarily say I'd drink this all the time, but I would drink this more than I would anything else you've had that I can think of. Uh, Jade 1901, I know you really like that one. Maybe. I, you know what? Maybe we'll have to do a taste comparison one night where I can do, you know, one of each to remember, because I don't even remember the flavor of that one. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. Precious came in and then left, and then she's come back in. And she's, she's about to slink through the door once again she's trying to convince us to go feed her it's not it's not dinner time for her yet though not yet it's only 6 47 so. so as far as what i'm tasting here i'm tasting a lot of melissa i am tasting a lot of uh minty flavors and Who's melissa <laughs> Funny. I know I'm funny. <laughs> Everyone knows him. Vote in the comments down below. Is Kenny funny? He Maybe is, not. honestly. If he weren't funny, I wouldn't be marrying him. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm tasting a lot of minty flavors. I'm tasting a lot of Melissa. I'm definitely getting a bit more of the aniseed, like the description said. And... It has a really decent kick of wormwood, which I'm obviously not opposed to because when absinthe is made properly, it is going to have a subtle sweetness. And when it's made properly, it will draw out that natural sweetness, that natural hidden sweetness that um, wormwood has. You're my natural sweetness. No, it's so sweet. <laughs> I will say, as I'm getting to the lower you know, lower in the glass. It is getting a little more bitter. But not in a bad way, I'm guessing. It's in a tolerable way. Okay. You know, it's 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 not as as sweet to the tongue um, as as when I first started drinking it. Um, I have a an interesting tingle on my tongue drinking this as well. That's wormwood. I know it's the wormwood. I'm just saying it's it's very almost numbing. I'm feeling it not just on my tongue, but uh, in just kind of the roof of my mouth. Yeah. So, so as, a, as an absinthe novice, would you recommend this for another novice? Yes. For another novice, I would say go ahead and drink this because um, it, it could become your gateway drink. Um, <laughs> you know, like, It's also not very strong. It's not particularly strong, which is good. Um, it's not really super bitter. Like some of the other ones I've I've tried with you, so. But the, then again, some of the ones that I have given you to try, I have given you without sugar, like uh, Libertine in ten seventy two. I gave, I gave that, I gave you a taste of that one without sugar. I didn't. I did not know it was without sugar. How could you do that to me? It was during one of my reviews. You How walked in. How could you do that to me? <laughs> I feel so betrayed. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm tasting a little bit of high sop and thyme as well. Definitely getting that, and then I'm also getting that that tangle from the wormwood. I taste time, you know. I taste things all the time, you know. <laughs> Anything there's anytime there's something in my mouth. You're tasting time. Yeah. 
It is You'd tasting taste. time. Yeah, it is tasting time. <laughs> name that the new, they make that the new like channel or the, the video series name, Tasting Time. Mm hmm. So, yeah, definitely it's not overly sweet. It has a little bit of sweetness, but. Oh, God, my mouth is watering. <laughs> I know it's a it's a good one when my mouth waters. Um, my mouth is watering. It's a good one. Um, definitely not overly sweet, but then again, you don't want it to be overpoweringly sweet um, unless you add sugar to it, of course. Apparently, um, back in the pre-band era when they were adding uh, sugar to absinthe, basically the purpose was to cut down on the bitterness of the alcohol, not on the wormwood. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Because obviously they like the flavor of anise, fennel, and wormwood. It's just that the alcohol would, you know, pack a punch. Oh yeah, makes me want a good, good shot of vodka. Here in about you know alcohol with a punch. I, <laughs> I went, the very first time I really started drinking, um, it was two things the night I I, I very first got drunk. Uh, it was shots of vodka. It was cherries and strawberries infused with vodka and then it was an absinthe drink referred <laughs> to as a tonberry uh, of yep. final fantasy fame yes. and it is um uh, uh one one part lucid well absinthe in general uh one part midori and one part apple sour liquor. sour apple pucker um uh, it's gotta be sour it's, sour apple yeah and it makes this it, gorgeous green color um it's an incredibly tasty tasty drink uh but it knocked me on my ass and the only times he's ever barfed from drinking have been from that well okay most of them like i've barfed three times from drinking twice was because of tom berries the third time was because um was adrian was home. my my dd we were driving on a bumpy dirt road and I was very drunk and all the bouncing just- Didn't help. It just jostled my stomach so much. As soon as the car was stopped, I went right out into my yard and let, it, let it loose. <laughs> so, loudly on here. as for Francois Guy absinthe, I really, really like it. Um, for some reason, I have noticed in some of the absinthe communities that people are pretty divided on it. I would say taste-wise, it is definitely four stars for aftertaste and mouthfeel, I guess. Also four stars. So overall, this is about a four-star absinthe. Uh, definitely really, really good. And if you are a beginner, of course, have it with sugar. Um, he recommends it with sugar. With sugar. Definitely, definitely with sugar. Definitely with sugar since, uh, you know, the, the pure, or rather the... One without sugar was just too bitter for him. Yeah, no, it was like immediately. I just started doing the coughing thing, and that's how I knew. I was like, oh, not for me. Any additional thoughts on Francois Guy? Um, no, not really. Um, just, you know, it's would a very you pleasant Would you describe thing. it as smooth? Yes, it's, it is very smooth, um, because I have not, with the exception of when I had yours without sugar, I did not have the kind of little cough that sometimes comes when I drink whiskey, mm -hmm. when I drink um, vodka, anything really high alcohol content um, or more than a beer, you know, you drink it and, and you kind of feel like the air is getting knocked out of you. Like, it, like it, it goes down into your stomach and just punches the air right out of your lungs. And you go, <laughs> I did not have that with the sugar, but I did have it with the non-sugar. Okay. I guess the sugar may have smoothed it smoothed it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I would say this is comparable to La Punto Saliende. Uh, they're made in the same region. Um, possibly the same distillery. I don't think they're made in the same distillery, but at, at the very least nearby. So, I really enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend it for a novice as long as they have it with sugar. Um, Kenny likes it. Yeah. Because honestly, if someone who doesn't like absinthe likes it, okay, that's well, saying this something. Is, this is this is very tolerable. Um, I I would I would drink this um, on special occasions. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't have a good uh, a good whiskey with me. <laughs> yeah, the night we got engaged, actually, um, I was I actually had a glass of Nouvelle Orléans 
um, because it was a special occasion after mm. we got engaged. So yeah. he went to fetch Chinese food and he said I could have a glass of absinthe in celebration. Yeah. I think I had I had that pecan whiskey. You did? Yeah. You had a couple sips of the Nouvelle Orient. Yeah. Yeah. You like that one too. Yeah. That one's a little spicier. A little spicier than Jade 1901. Yeah. But anyway, so that was our review, and I say our because we both reviewed it. Yeah. <laughs> our review of uh, Francois Guy, uh, 45% alcohol, definitely not bad. It's a really good option for beginners. So leave your comments down below. Did you have any different experiences with Francois Guy if you've had it? You know, let me know. I'd like to see why people are so divided. And uh, let us know if me being in on the tasting as an amateur is either uh, beneficial. If, you, if, if, for example, if you're an amateur, do you want the opinion of someone who, who's not really into it? Or are you, you know, is it better if I'm just out of the picture and you focus <laughs> on this lovely lady um. right here? So just, you know, that, that's some good feedback. Too. <laughs> Yes, that would be good to know. If you enjoy Kenny being here as an absinthe novice, then please let me know in the comments. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that bell for notifications because YouTube is weird. And uh, thank you so much to Kenny for being here in this video. You were very helpful and hilarious I and adorable. Am. I 100%. And there will be a little um, surprise at the end of this video for you to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, Thank you so much to my patrons. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your support. You're amazing. And to everyone, I love you, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye. There we go. Now we're recording live from, from Oak Adrian's Harbor studio. in Ad Adrian and Kenny's studio. Uh, I'm saying it's Adrian and Kenny's studio because, I mean, I, I technically could do whatever I wanted here and, and she wouldn't stop me. I could make my own little YouTube channel and I could just use her very same set and, and no one would know. No one would know. It'd be hilarious, really. Or people would realize it, and then they'd call me out and be like, aren't you just using your soon-to-be wife's set, you lazy asshole? Can't you go and make your own? I'd be like, no, don't you see? Uh, it's already the, here. It's already here. Why waste more money and, and resources uh, and space on a whole second set when I could just utilize what's already here? I mean, I'm utilizing her equipment right now. I, I do love this microphone, truly. Well, it's what made my dreams come true. Yeah, yeah, this microphone was integral to that. Especially because all the recording stations and, and stuff like that and on sketchy. the island, were, well, they were shut down because of COVID. Or sketchy. Or sketchy. Uh, it's, it's things like this that also make me uh, miss my friends with Indigo Kit. Uh, check out their new music video and song, Make It Spooky. It just recently came out. They were playing around with some, uh, I guess, some really old vintage microphones from the 60s. But they uh, created, uh, they wrote, you know, created, recorded all of it in one day. Brand new, Make It Spooky uh, on YouTube. It's Indigo Kid, Kid with two Ds. I'm still waiting on my food, she says. I'm still hungry. She's like, you guys don't feed me enough. And I'm thinking, Precious, before your recent illness, you were a chonk. You were my chonky. chonky. You were my chonky cat. You're chonky. Ooh, you can hear the burn now. All right, oh, if you can scooch and let me in, that'd be great. Oh, I guess I can do that.
I guess. Till next time, this was Kenneth FM. <laughs>